1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 18 says this. Give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. Since it's such a long verse, let's do it one more time. Give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. The title of today's message is simply, Up From the Dust. Let's pray. Father, we love you and we praise you. We thank you so much. Here we are, the last day of Sukkot. Father, it has been an awesome week with awesome people serving you, the awesome and only God. I pray right now, Father, you will speak through me your words, your words, nothing more, nothing less, your words straight from your throne, penetrating every single one of our hearts so we can become doers of your word and not hearers only. In Yeshua's holy name, and everyone agree by saying, amen. amen, amen. Last week, we talked about David's mighty men. And I wanted to go in more detail with that, but things didn't allow me to because of time. But my question is, who were these men? Where did they come from? I mean, we read all about the exploits that we did. We read them all. All these things, mighty things that they did. So, but who were they before they came to David? Now, in order to know who they were, who what kind of people they were, where they came from, the things they struggled with, we have to go to 1 Samuel chapter 22. David left Gath and escaped to the cave of Adullam. When his brothers and his father's household heard about it, they went down to him there. Verse 2. All those who were in distress, in debt, or discontented gathered around him, and he became their leader. About 400 men were with him. So these mighty men who we read about all these massive exploits, it says the three Ds, in distress, in debt, and discontented. That's the people that Yahweh brought David to pull him out. We have to remember, Yahweh can use anybody. Wow. I thought I was a Torah family for a second there. Yahweh can use anybody. Amen. Amen. You see, how many times have we heard people say, Yahweh can't use me. My life's in shambles. <laughs> in debt, distress, discontented. If there's anybody who was in, in, life was in shambles, that's who Yahweh brought to David. And look what he did through them. The mighty exploits. He used them in a mighty, awesome way. Folks, listen to me. I said this is going to be quick, and it's going to be quick to the point. It is time to stop being cowards. It is time to stop making excuses. It's time for us to realize what the Father can do through us. It's time, listen to me, it's time to get out of our pity party saying Yahweh can't use you and and start your boot camp to be the mighty warrior of Yeshua yeah. listen to me I we all have to come to this realization that we have to get out of the mindset he can't use us are you with me yeah. you see these guys that we just read about they were in this state for how long we don't know but the point is, once they came to David, that's when the boot camp started. Okay, guys, and the movie we watched the other night did a great job showing. They had to train their minds for battle. Had to train everything about them to refocus, refocus. Say the word in your mind, refocus. You have to refocus yourself to, get no, to go where you need to go. Otherwise, you're going to stay on the same broken tracks. Now, it's time to be determined to walk in our boot camp that Yeshua has for us. Yeshua didn't come to make us safe. Listen, he came to make us a threat to the kingdom of darkness. So we have got to get out of this defeated mentality. The little lamb can't be anything. No, it's time for the lions to roar. Okay? We are to be like our Savior, to walk in his, as he walked. Now then, what's the difference between motivation and discipline? Rhetorical, don't answer. 
What's the difference between motivation and discipline? You see, motivation is nothing but hype. Listen to me. Motivation is hype that is awesome when we get, oh, man, we are so excited. But then it fades away. Remember when you were kids back in the day for all of us and Gen X and stuff, we had toys that would, you wind it up. Okay, you wind it up and you're so excited all of a sudden, and it starts going, you're going, oh, wow. All of a sudden it's going, and it's going, and it's not going, and then it's just stopped. And then you go, oh, and you start all over again. And that's sometimes what happens with our life. We get all hyped up. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Good God Almighty. I'm ready to go. And then you go and it's like, well, you know, I'm just kind of, yeah, it's, yeah, okay, yeah. I'm done. Been there, done that. Come on. Amen or roll me. And it's kind of like, think of it this way too. You throw a bouncing ball as high as you can. That's the hype. And all of a sudden, the hype comes down. It's too, oh, it's got the momentum. Oh, man, does it have momentum. And it bounces. But it doesn't bounce quite as high the next time. And then it, it bounces again. And then it's just not near, near as much. And then it keeps going less and less. And our same situation in our life. Oh, man, we go, 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 man. He throws us up there and says, you can do it. We go, yeah, we can. Wait, yeah, we're going, where are we going again? Yeah, maybe not as high. Okay, and then, well, then it's not. Okay, I went, oh, well, now, okay, yeah, I'm done. Come on, come on. Y'all have been there. I'm not the only one. Amen. Now, see, the problem is, too, a lot of times the spring and the toy, well, it eventually just what? Wears out. Because why? It keeps doing the same thing over and it just wears out. Eventually the hype doesn't do it for you. See, the problem is motivation is a part of our makeup. It's just who we are who we are as humans. It's not constant. Discipline, on the other hand, is something we have to choose to overcome our weaknesses. Difference between motivation and discipline. Discipline we choose. And listen to me. If you're going to write anything down, write this down. It's time to be motivated to start our discipline. That's what the motivation is for, to get us doing what we need to do, not just experience the hype, not just experience the glory, which is all good stuff. Don't get me wrong. But it's the discipline in our walk that will maintain the consistency in our walk, walking in him, like him, after him, everything that goes with it. Are you with me? We have to be motivated to start that discipline. But like David's mighty men, Sometimes he lets us see what we can do on our own. He lets us mess it up. And then he says, are you done? Are you going to let me lead now? Are you going to let me be the one? See, those David's mighty men, they had to make the choice to follow David. And remember, Yeshua is likened what? Unto David. He's the king like David. Other way around, but more so I could even say. Without him, we mess it up. Only when we are willing will he step in and say, okay, let's do this. You see, sometimes the Father has to crush us to make us who we're supposed to be. Listen to what I'm about to tell you. We're really good at trying to negotiate with Yahweh. You know it. You know, we are very good at trying to say, you know what, I'll, I'll just, I'll give you everything here, and, but I, I want to keep this, okay? And then I'll give you all of this. You can have it. You can have it. It is yours. I'll do whatever you want, but I want this right here. Come on. We're good at that. We give him everything but this or everything but that. You know, it's kind of funny. Who was at the baptisms yesterday? Wasn't that awesome? Hallelujah. <laughs> now, where's loss in that? Right here. Okay, so it's all good. It's all good. <laughs> Not calling you up. But he, he hurt his finger, okay, and he had some stitches. Ow. Okay, ow, right, okay. And well, he gets baptized, and he walks up, and we're, we're just trying to figure out, let's not get his hand in the water, okay, because it's, it's, it's all fresh. Let's try to keep it out. So 
as I'm, he's going down, he's doing, he's holding the hand up and stuff, you know, and we got it. We did the baptism. Didn't go under. So the hand didn't go under. So we saved the bandage. We saved any possible anything issues. He takes two steps. <laughs> in the water he goes. It was a slip. But it's just so funny. Here we are doing everything we can. And God goes, no, he's, he's all going down. Oh, yeah, it's all, it's all getting baptized, brother. It's just so funny. <laughs> but that's the way it is. Sometimes we, we want to go, we'll, we'll baptize everything, but just this one part of our life, no, don't, don't, don't touch that. We're good. Okay. Then we walk, and he goes, nope. And we should be thankful for that. You know that, right? When he rips something out of our life, and it can hurt. See, we're laughing now. But when you're in that moment, and the father goes, no. Think of a parent talking to their child, and the parent says, no. The child goes, yeah. you know. All you, the moms and dads who've had the little ones, we know. Here's the thing. He wants to get things out of our life. See, when we get out of his will, listen to me. When we get out of his will, we get hardened in our will. Listen, you ever seen a potter on a clay moving, they got the spinning, spinning wheel. And the, pot, the little piece of clay is right smack in the center of the wheel. Imagine, if you will, the center of God's will. When you're in the center of God's will, he can form and fashion you at his liking, when he wants, how he wants. But the second that piece of clay even gets the slight amount off center, it's no longer spinning. It's doing this now. Can the, can the clay maker work with that clump of clay now? No. He can't work with it because it's not in the center of his wheel. Only when we are in the center of God's will can he work on us. Then what happens? The farther we get out, we start, it starts sliding. We will start sliding because of the momentum. And you guys know, those of you who are from my, my time, the, the spinning wheel at the playground, we're all holding on. You want to get in the center. Because why? Because that's where you can just be safe and you're spinning. But the second you, get, you start falling to the side, whoop, you're gone. And everyone's laughing at you. And they take the center. Same principle. When we get out of his center of his out of the center of his wheel, we start sliding faster and faster. We think it's good, then all of a sudden it gets out of control. We realize, oh, maybe this isn't good. And when we do that, the wind is blowing on us far more. We get hardened in our ways. So hardened that we get hard. What has to happen? He has to break us. He has to break us. He gets the holy hammer of the word of God and starts smashing us. And we're going, what are you doing? He goes, trust me, it hurts me more than it hurts you. And he breaks us down to pieces. But then that's not enough. What's he do next? He starts getting all those little pieces. And you think, oh, he's going to start, he's going to start healing me now. No, oh, no, he gets them all together to start crushing them into fine dust. And he starts, oh, zig, 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 zig. and we're going, what are you doing? And he's going, trust me. When it doesn't make a dime of sense. Come on, you've been there. And for what it's worth, on this side of eternity, it may never make sense. So don't try. He has his understanding. Trust him. But the more he crushes us, then what happens? It's only until we come that fine dust again. Then he pours the water all over again, puts us back as a clump, smack in the middle of his wheel, and starts over. But until you submit to the being in the center of his wheel, that won't happen. Amen. So I say to all of us again, 1 Thessalonians 5.18, Give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. Whatever phase you're in, be disciplined by Yeshua, to rise up in him and do mighty things in him. Regardless of what phase you're in, if you're in the three Ds, in debt, discontent, all of it. Or if you're actually in the middle of his of training, you've gone past all that. You're in, you're in the army and you're in that boot camp and you're in training. Whatever you're in, wherever you're at, 
turn back to him 100% as is intended. And he can use you. Rise up from that dust that he had to crush you down in. Rise up from the dust and let him use you to his likeness and make you in his likeness and use you beyond reason that you can't even imagine. I can promise you those mighty men who were in debt, discontented, all of it, they had no idea the hand of the Father could do what they, he did through them. They had not even dreamed it. But because they choose the right, chose to follow the right one and submit to God their lives, that's when he used them. And that can happen to every single one of us. Amen? Amen. Let's pray. Father, we love you. We praise you. We thank you for this day. We thank you for your word, knowing that you are moving in our lives. You have a plan for our lives. I pray right now, Father, that you will determine in every single one of our hearts to no longer be distracted, to no longer allow our lives to mean nothing, but to be something in you and you alone, following you in your ways, no matter what it costs. We know, Father, you are in charge, and it's time for us to let you have charge of our life, no matter the cost. In Yeshua's holy name, we thank you for it all, and everyone agree by saying, Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah.